at this countdown, we have the California condor. The California condor is the largest vulture and land bird in North America. From tip to tip, its wings stretch about 10 feet. It's got a big wingspan. They also can fly as high as 15,000 feet in the air. Now these vultures used to live all throughout the southwestern US into northwestern Mexico. But during the 20th century, their population started to decline due to pesticides, poaching, and loss of habitat. By 1987, there were so few left that scientists declared them extinct. During that time, there were only about 27 or less in the wild. But don't worry, the US government actually helped save these animals. They created a captive breeding program and set it up in a number of zoos across the country. This program is said to be one of the most expensive conservation projects in US history. It cost about $35 million and $2 million per year to keep it up. And slowly but surely, they helped increase the amount of condors. As of 2019, their population is at 118. Some of the birds have even been reintroduced into the wild. They are still at risk, but all the birds are tagged and the US are keeping a close eye on them to make sure they never get near extinction ever again. In our ninth spot today, we have the Somali elephant shrew. Now don't be fooled, this isn't an elephant, but it does have a long pointed snout like an elephant. It's as small as a mouse and kind of looks like one too, but they aren't actually a shrew, that rhymed. In fact, they are related to aardvarks, elephants, and manatees. You heard me correctly, these tiny little creatures are related to elephants and manatees. How? I, I, don't, I don't understand nature. Anyways, the last recorded sighting of this creature was in the 1970s. After that, scientists declared the species extinct. That was until August of 2020. A team of researchers were out doing studies when they came across these tiny little creatures. From there, they decided to try and see how many elephant shrews were left in the wild. So they set up more than 1,000 traps with a tasty treat of peanut butter, oatmeal, and yeast inside. In total, they came across 12 elephant shrews of the same species. Now, thousands of these little guys are back and are no longer threatened or in danger. Moving on to number eight, we have the Bermuda petrel. This is the second rarest seabird on the planet. In fact, it was last seen on Nonsuch Island in 1620. They literally thought it was extinct for over 300 years. They went extinct because their habitat was destroyed by sea erosion and hurricanes. But then in the 1950s, they were like, surprise, no, we're here, we're here to stay, we're just playing. So in the 1950s, their nest was spotted east of Bermuda with a few birds nearby. In 1951, 36 of these birds were rediscovered. And as of 2021, their population is increasing. The government created new nesting sites for these seabirds. And as of spring 2020, there are a total of 134 breeding pairs. We went from 18 to 134. Hell yeah. But according to conservation officer Jeremy Madrios, he said, and I quote, it's an ongoing recovery, an example for threatened species around the world in an era when encroachment on and destruction of habitats is putting more species at risk than ever before. Well spoken. In our seventh spot today, we have the horned marsupial frogs. These little guys are so freaking cute. Like, just look at them. They have like weird pointy eyeball horns. But its eye horns aren't the only thing that makes this frog pretty weird. Its eggs develop in a pouch on the female's back. And when they hatch, you got fully formed frogs instead of tadpoles. That's pretty unusual for frogs. Anyways, these frogs live in the tropical rainforest in Ecuador. But due to habitat loss from oil palm crops, timber, and mining, the frogs went extinct around 2005. They were declared extinct for 13 years until 2018 when they made a comeback. Since extinction, they now have a population of 350 with 18 new species. Moving on to number six, we have the Takahi. The Takahi are flightless birds that are native to New Zealand. They honestly kind of look like peacocks without the big colorful feathers. It's because they have the same bluey, greeny colorway. In the 1890s, their population began to decline due to hunting, competition for food, predators, and habitat loss. By 1890s, they were declared extinct. But then, 50 years later, a small group of them were discovered high in the Murchison Mountains. As of 2019, the population is 418. It is said to be growing at a rate of 10% per year, slowly but surely. In fact, the rediscovery of this bird inspired New Zealand's longest-running endangered species program. 
It's been in the works for more than 70 years now, with plans to make sure that this animal or any other animal never becomes extinct again, as well as they help save endangered species. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with the Tarsier. These are one of the cutest animals to ever exist. Just look at it. It looks like a cute little weird monkey squirrel alien thing. Like I want one as a pet. Anyways, this interesting creature is considered a nocturnal primate, but scientists still don't know much about it. One of the reasons being is that scientists thought that they went extinct in the 1920s. But in May of 2000, while checking a rat trap that they had set up in a forest, scientists discovered that they had actually accidentally caught a tarsier. Sadly though, this little dude was dead. But still, they were like, oh shoot, these creatures are back. Then in 2008, researchers found a family of them in Lor Lindu National Park. Nowadays, it's believed that there are only 5,000 to 10,000 of these animals in the whole world. And that number is sadly falling again instead of rising. It's because these little creatures don't live too long in captivity. In fact, when they are in distress, they apparently try and take their own lives. So that's a reason why it's hard to look after these little guys and keep them off of the endangered list. And our fourth spot today, we have the golden lion tamarind. But I like to call it the golden majestic monkey. Like, look at this thing! Look at its luscious locks. It's got nicer hair than me. Anyways, this orange primate is located in Brazil's Atlantic forest. But sadly, with its habitat being destroyed, the population is at great risk. In the early 1970s, so few of them were alive in the wild that they were declared extinct. But with the help from the World Wildlife Federation, public charities, and 150 zoos, Brazil's government has been able to help these monkeys. There's now a healthy population of them being looked after by zoos all over the world. Plus, they have already breeded and reintroduced around 1,700 of these majestic guys back into the wild. It's sad, but the main threat these guys face is urbanization of the area. They're losing space to call home, and that's what's putting them at risk the most. Moving on to number three, we have Catagonus wagneri. Now, these animals are weird because just look at them. They look like gray hairy pigs or warthogs, but you know, without the little horns. Either way, I still find them cute. Back in the day, this creature was discovered from early fossil records. Then in 1974, a biology professor from University of Connecticut was on a National Geographic research expedition when he rediscovered these creatures. And they are no longer considered endangered or extinct. A huge population of them live in a 2400 acre area in Grand Chaco. They hide out in the bushy thorny areas so that they are safe from jaguars and pumas and local hunters. Another huge population resides in the Tagua Sanctuary at the CCCI Conservation Center. In our second spot today, we have the Tasmanian Devil. Not the dude from Looney Tunes. Don't worry, he's still being animated and he is well. Anyways, the Tasmanian Devil used to be found all over the place, but now they are only found on the island state of Tasmania. Around 3,000 years ago, these creatures went extinct because of predation. They were being hunted by the dingo. And then they were hit by the devil facial tumor disease, which is a contagious form of cancer. This spread like wildfire and killed 90% of the population. As a result, they were declared extinct. But over the years, the creatures were reintroduced to wildlife sanctuaries and have been introduced in New South Wales in Australia. This has helped save the population. Plus, the population is thriving in Tasmania, as there are no dingoes there to hurt them. And in our number one spot today, we have the Silocanth. The Silocanth, which is spelled nothing like it's pronounced, I thought it would be like Koala Camp, <laughs> but no, I guess not. Anyways, these dudes have the most famous comeback story of all time. These fish were said to have been around when the dinosaurs were alive. That's right, that's how old these dudes are. In the 19th century, that's when scientists discovered a fossil of this fish. The fossils were said to be over 410 million years old. It's said that they went extinct around 66 million years ago. That was until 1938 when they were rediscovered off the coast of South Africa. That has to be the greatest comeback of all time. 
They still are critically endangered, but the fact that they managed to survive millions of years is absolutely insane. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have the woolly mammoth. We would certainly be missing a very important animal on this list if we didn't include the woolly mammoth. These guys were of course a species of mammoth, and in fact, they were one of the last in line of mammoth species. Because of the fact that in both Alaska and Siberia there were frozen carcasses discovered, they're actually one of the most well-studied extinct creatures. Exactly why or how they were driven to extinction is widely debated, and another thing people like to debate is whether or not we should try and bring them back. There was a genome project completed in 2015, and since then it has been proposed that the species could be revived through a few different means, but no one yet has taken the leap. Here's the thing though, there's a new company that is pretty set on de-extincting woolly mammoths, and they have a new investor. This investor is called InQtel, and they are registered as a non-profit venture capital firm that is funded by none other than the CIA. They claim that the interest in this company is less about mammoths and more about the capability to do such crazy projects. What do you guys think about reviving extinct animals? Are we on board? Are we terrified? Let us know down below in the comments. Number nine, passenger pigeons. The passenger pigeon once ruled the skies over Canada as recently as the 19th century. Billions of these bright orange birds would paint the skies, but only a few decades passed and passenger pigeons are gone. They're just no more. Now we have the pigeons that follow you onto the subway, you know? What happened, right? The very last passenger pigeon was Martha. She passed away in the Cincinnati Zoo back in 1914. So we took a look at her DNA to see if Martha held any secrets to her past, and lo and behold, they discovered Martha had a low genetic diversity for such a growing population. Natural selection and hunting eliminated arguably the coolest looking bird alive. Well, not alive anymore. The last one died in 1914, but in 2019, paleontologists found remains of the pigeon in protected indigenous lands in Canada in the Northwest Territories. They blended passenger pigeon DNA with archaeoteric dinosaur DNA. So that's, that's science for you. We're bringing back pigeons with a hint of dinosaur. What could go wrong? In our number eight spot today, we have the Western Black Rhinoceros. The Western Black Rhino was a subspecies of the Black Rhinoceros, and they made their home in the savanna of Sub-Saharan Africa. These guys were, unfortunately, the victims of poaching, which led to their rapid decline. Isn't that a bit ironic? People got so greedy trying to kill these incredible animals so that they could make money off of them, and now they can't make any money off of them because they killed them all. What a genius business plan. Anyways, this species first originated around seven to eight million years ago, and for most of the 1900s, it was the highest population of rhino species. That all changed, however, as from 1970 to 1992, the population of black rhinos in general decreased by 96%. Other than poachers, another main culprit for the decline was farmers who killed the animals to protect their crops that were placed close to rhino territories. The last sighting of a western black rhinoceros was in 2006 in Cameroon's northern province, and sadly, the subspecies was officially declared extinct in 2011. Number seven, the great auk. Once thriving in colonies off North Atlantic coasts, the great auk would grow to 30 inches long, and its tiny wings would only be used to swim. Their wings were about 13 centimeters long, and they were so cute, and obviously, just looking at them, they were quite defenseless. I don't know if you could have picked up on that, just, yeah. You could probably take them. Very cute, very defenseless, you get it. Around the 1500s, European fishermen discovered this perfect area for hunting. And sadly, it just happened to be where most, if not all, great ox were living. Newfoundland looked like the iceberg and club penguin. It was kinda, dare I say, perfect. Unless you were, of course, a great auk. You were eating good if you were a fisherman, so the number rapidly declined. And by 1950, the last two known specimens ever were hunted by a single fisherman on Elde Island, just off the coast of Iceland. Yeah, one dude just Thanos the bird population. Nice, what a monster. What a great brunch. Scientists now plan on using genetic information extracted from their fossils, or preserved organs, because some have organs in jars just hiding around. They plan on editing their DNA into the closest living species, which is now the razor-billed auk. The organization Revive and store is behind the wheel on this one. You'll see a few names come up over and over on this list and yeah, not too many companies are trying to bring animals back from the dead. In our number six spot today, we have the Morian viviparous tree snail. This was a species of air-breathing tropical land snails that were endemic to French Polynesia. This extinction was actually caused by a chain of events that happened after something humans did. The African land snail was introduced into Tahiti in 1967 as a food source, but it quickly escaped 
began to destroy crops. Biologists wanted to attempt to control the African land snail, so they decided to introduce the rosy wolf snail to the area in 1977. Well, this went absolutely haywire as the rosy wolf snail didn't just control the population of African land snails, but rather started to eradicate all of the snails that were native to the area, which of course includes our little friend, the Morian viviparous tree snail. So this one little introduction led to them becoming totally extinct in the wild. These snails do still exist in captivity, and there have been attempts to re-release them into the wild, but the rosy wolf snail continues to prey upon them. So at this point, researchers are unsure if it will ever be possible for them to live in the wild again. Number five, Megatherium, AKA giant ground sloths. How lovely and terrifying is this one? Sloths used to be a lot bigger than we think. Yeah, we often laugh at them for being so slow and funny looking. The movie Ice Age certainly didn't help their case. Now, of course, the giant ground sloth is closely related to our modern three-toed sloth. But luckily for us, today's aren't the same size as an elephant because that would be a horror film. We wouldn't be alive anymore. I'd be sick to my stomach. If a giant elephant-sized sloth was in that movie, that would be not a family feature film. That is terrifying. That's Jurassic Park now. But we may be able to bring this one back, although they died off 8,000 years ago. DNA samples were extracted from their hairy remains, so the next step is to develop a fetus in an artificial womb. Yeah, that sounds easy, doesn't it? Let's just do that, sure. Let's 3D print it. In our number four spot today, we have the Tasmanian tiger. These guys are actually less like tigers than we're used to, but they're actually marsupials, but not really like the marsupials we know today. These guys are a carnivorous marsupial that was native to Australia mainland and the islands of Tasmania and New Guinea. These guys had anatomy and adaptations that bared similarities to both tigers and wolves, despite being unrelated. They were certainly an apex predator at their time, and as of now, their closest ancestors that are still surviving are the Tasmanian Devil and the Numat. Because of these living relatives, it is thought that scientists might be able to bring back these creatures by selecting certain parts of their DNA and sort of selectively breeding the species back into reality. Number three, the moa. This New Zealand bird went extinct about 600 years ago. The moa were these flightless birds, massive and terrifying, might I add. An archeologist first discovered its fossil in a cave. Its flesh and everything was still attached. They had no idea what they were looking at for numerous years. And to be fair, yeah, it's haunting, it's terrifying. These ancient birds would reach about five feet tall. And when you think of dinosaurs, you probably think that's quite petite in comparison to you know, the scary ones. But the birds actually stopped flying right after dinosaurs went extinct because they didn't need to fly anymore, they didn't need to run for their lives. According to biologist Matthew Phillips from the Australian National University in Canberra, these birds were then safely able to roam the land after they didn't need to make these daring dino air escapes. It's beautiful, they just walked around, got fat, and would hang out in caves, then they eventually died off. Dare I say, the perfect device. Phillips says this was an advantage when it came to birds and evolution because wings, big or small, they do kill energy. So it might seem a little depressing to watch a creature lose the ability of flight, but well, it's because they're eating good, okay? Good problems. Scientists have found more MOA DNA from ancient eggshells, so yeah, it's a possibility we may see these fatties soar the skies once again. They just gotta, you know. Shed a few bird pounds, that's all. In our number two spot today, we have the woolly rhinoceros. We talked about another kind of rhino before, but now we have a woolly one. I didn't even really know that these ones used to exist. These guys were a species that was quite common in Europe and Asia during the Pleistocene, and they survived up until the end of the last glacial period. These guys were an animal that is seen depicted in cave paintings, and we've even discovered their bones and remains that were mummified and preserved in permafrost. These guys were stocky and they had a thick woolly coat which helped them survive in the cold tundra environment. In 2020, there was actually one of the best preserved remains of one of these animals ever found, which is a remarkable scientific discovery, but it has now prompted the questions about possibly reviving the species. And finally, number one, the smartest of them all, the biggest, baddest, the dodo bird. Dodo birds were once big and beautiful. They once filled islands all over the Indian Ocean. They had massive talons, they were gray and blue, they didn't have any natural predator, it was great. And then humans came along. Nice, way to go. Put that thumbs up for just up everything possibly around us. Around 1507, the island was discovered by Portuguese sailors, and yeah, the rest is history. We can probably figure out what happened there. It was delicious, dare I say. They were the easiest bird to hunt, hence the phrase, dead as a dodo. They're, they're kind of stupid. They weren't just loved by sailors either. They were not 100% to blame here, okay? Monkeys, rats, pigs, any animal that made its way to these islands 
easily had their eggs for lunch and they were pretty big, they were nice, over easy. So it didn't take a long time for the dodo bird population to be completely wiped out, cause you know, yum. The last dodo was hunted in 1681, but <laughs> could it be? Could we bring back the smartest dodo bird? Possibly, I don't really want this to happen, it'd be terrifying, but it might. Scientists found an extremely well-preserved dodo skeleton back in 2007, so we may have a chance at picking apart some DNA. A research facility near Melbourne, Australia is currently trying to use pigeon genes to bring this bird back as well. So yeah, I can't wait for dodo bird chicken wings. That's gonna be a nice combo. Number four, ooh, number three, definitely number three. In our number 10 spot, we have the elephant bird. The elephant bird became extinct approximately 1,000 to 1,200 CE, and it is most likely due to human activity, due to hunting, climate, and vegetation change, and habitat loss due to deforestation. These birds are from the ratite family, Epornethidae, and they were enormous flightless birds. They used to live in Madagascar. They stood about 9.8 feet tall and weighed approximately 1,600 pounds. Their closest living relative is the kiwi bird. It is said that they most likely ate low hanging fruit, even though they look like they could gobble you up in one go. I would have personally thought them to be carnivores, but thankfully not. I would be fine if scientists brought them back. Any herbivore, you know, is fine, but if they pulled a Jurassic Park on us and brought back the carnivore, then I would not be okay. In our number nine spot, we have the Pyrenean Ibex. The Pyrenean Ibex was basically a wild goat. When people say that they love goats, I'm always a little perplexed. Why? Just why? <laughs> Watch, watch my dad will for sure watch this episode and will say something like, hey, I love goats. And yes, he does indeed. I don't know why. He's always sending me goat videos when he goes to his friend's farm. I shall never understand. Anyways, this wild goat was five feet long and apparently 30 inches tall. It was found in Southwestern Europe and the species died out in 2003, which is really not that long ago. I was 13. Shoot, I need to stop giving away my age. I mean, I was just born. <laughs> Anyways, the last goat was born and died seven minutes after its birth due to a lung defect. Hunting, inbreeding, and other factors basically caused this goat's extinction over time. Honestly, it's a bit of a shame that this goat no longer exists because it looks rather majestic, much more classier than regular goats. In our number eight spot, we have the Chinese river dolphin. It breaks my heart to think that a species of the dolphin might be extinct, but sadly it is. The Chinese river dolphin, known as the Baji, sadly went extinct in 2002. It primarily lived in freshwater rivers, primarily in the Yangtze River. The main reason for its extinction is due to the impact of humans. It was directly targeted by meat lovers, but also due to an increasing amount of construction projects on the river, the dolphin who relies primarily on its sonar capabilities found it hard to navigate for food because of the construction noise. Pollution in the waters also didn't help either, as well as overfishing. The males were about 7.5 feet long, while the females could be about 8.2 feet. I have a soft spot for dolphins, so honestly, I really hope scientists are able to bring this one back. In our number four spot, we have the saber-toothed tiger. Okay, if scientists brought back this species, this would be insane. But do we really need another predatory species that want humans to die? We already have to deal with, you know, lions, tigers, and the reptiles in our government. So I think I speak for all of us when I say this isn't necessary, but would be cool to witness. <laughs> The saber-toothed tiger has been a wonder to many for so, so long. They are famously known for their long, curved canine teeth. It could weigh anywhere between 485 pounds to 961 pounds. It was approximately 39 inches tall. Its closest relative is the tiger, of course. They originated in North and South America about 10,000 years ago, so it would be extraordinary if scientists found a way to bring them out of extinction. 
In our number three spot, we have the Glyptodont. The Glyptodont is a larger subfamily of the armadillo. They were around from approximately 34 million years ago in South America, and when the continents became connected, they spread to North America. They were about 12 feet long and 1.5 feet high. They had fluted teeth, and they were covered in a thick, bony carapace. They went extinct approximately 7,000 to 8,000 years ago. It's so interesting how much bigger animals were thousands of years ago, and now all of these big animals have much smaller subfamilies that are alive today. I mean, obviously, that's better for us humans as the less threats we have physically, you know, the better, but still interesting to note. In our number two spot, we have the quagga. Okay, so you're probably thinking, Melissa, is this not just a zebra? Yeah, it is a species of a zebra, but it's still different and it's extinct and scientists are thinking of bringing it back. The quagga went extinct in the 19th century and one of the last pictures that we have of the quagga alive is from 1870 in a London zoo. It's a subspecies of zebra from South Africa. It's about 8 feet 5 inches long and 4 feet 5 inches tall. It has a sandy brown coat with a white tail and stripes from the top to the middle part of its body. They were herbivores and would typically live 20 to 40 years. They look, you know, pretty majestic to me. I hope this is a species that scientists are able to bring back. In our number one spot, we have the ground sloth. The ground sloth is from South Africa and went extinct approximately 11,000 years ago, and some of the species of ground sloths have been extinct longer. The megatherium, for example, has been extinct for 12,000 years, and this one in particular looks more like a bear than a sloth. It was massive and could be up to 20 feet tall, weighing about 6,600 pounds. Imagine these sloths were just roaming the world today. There are already enough scary bears in the world. I feel like, you know, we're good without this one. But still, this would be an unbelievable breakthrough if we could bring back these creatures. Although I am sure that they wouldn't be as friendly as Sid from Ice Age. That short, cute little guy wouldn't hurt a fly. His lisp is literally the cutest thing in the world. But anyways, would be cool if they came back. In at number 10. Whoa, that guy's fast. What is that? His nose is like so long. Is this real? I don't even know what that is. I don't even know how to research this little guy. <laughs> okay, well, apparently that was the elephant shrew, last known to be seen over 50 years ago, but it was rediscovered in August of 2020. These mighty little mouse-like creatures are thriving in Africa. Pretty cool something so small was able to evade a full extinction. So before we get into number nine, make sure you guys hit the like button on this video because it really helps us out. All right, let's see what we have in at number nine. The Tarsier is named, <laughs> whoa, hello there, freaky. The Tarsier is named after its long, impressive bone in its ankle, you perv. Okay, whoa, what is this little thing? So the animals on this list are pretty tiny. This one is no different. The pig's meat taster of the taster family of the world's smallest primates hails from the depths of Indonesia. The taster still lives, but its pig's meat cousin is said to have been extinct until a man accidentally captured and killed one in a mouse trap in 2000. Since then, several pig's meat tasters have been found and tagged in Indonesia, and it is believed that they no longer exist. Great big thin membranous ears and those sharp teeth, more like those you'd see on a bat. Okay, oh. wait, first of all, I thought these things were cute, but they're, they're pretty creepy if you ask me. Apparently these guys are adept predators for being able to fit in your palm of your hand. Pretty wild, but anyone else getting like the baby Yoda vibes from this? Perhaps it could live many centuries. Next up at number eight, the terror skink. Thought once to be extinct. Well, this video shows a man who found one in Caledonia in 2018. These little things were said to be the T-Rex of their time. Serious meat-eating predator reptiles. They got their name from their mouthful of sharp teeth. So this skink is the top predator here on this island in New Caledonia. There's no doubt 
that this guy is the T-Rex of this island. Number seven, is this real life right now? What is that? There's no way that thing existed in our life. Like what world? Was that real? And those sharks are like, when they eat things, their, their melts come out of their mouths and it's just like, it's, it's so horrifying. Here's another picture. I mean, it looks like it's, it's real. Apparently these things went extinct many years ago, but now it has been rediscovered. This last picture right here looks so real and it looks like it's kind of like slimy. And this one doesn't look like it was taken in the water. This one looks like it was captured, it was taken out of the water. But you can see what I'm saying about like the mouth. I'm not sure where it begins and where it ends. But is it just me or is its teeth like exactly spaced out? Kind of creepy, sharp teeth. I'd be scared if I was like swimming and I saw one of these. Okay, so the images that we were seeing is actually the goblin shark. You guys can search it online. You guys can see so many more pictures of this. Well, it was actually said to be extinct over 125 million years ago. But like other deep sea creatures, it didn't actually disappear. It didn't go extinct. It just hid in the depths beyond human discovery. And it is said to be back and is thriving. These pictures were taken from National Geographic in 2020. So just months ago, it was actually in August. So the images you're seeing is legit. Moving right along to number six, move on murder wasp, Wallace giant bee, or the mega chili Pluto is said to be back in action. In 2018, two of these bad boys were available for the highest bidder and none other than eBay itself, the place where we're buying Pokemon cards. I just came across a Charizard, 25 grand. Should I buy it? <laughs> okay, so apparently you can buy this creature, like you can make a transaction if you have have $9,000. In 2019, a single female was found in a termite nest and reopened the species as no longer being extinct. Well, here's a clip that I wanted to share with you guys. So 100% authentic and to scale. Okay, maybe, maybe not, but could you guys imagine like that was the size of the killer bees? Like just absolutely massive. Moving right along, number five, what sound does a deer make? Go in the comment section and tell me. I, I don't know how you're gonna tell me a sound. Like, well, a cow would just be M O O O O O. For a deer, I don't know how you type out the sound of a deer, but we're not bringing you just any deer on this list. The Kashmir musk deer has been endangered, extinct, and back to endangered again. I mean, how does this even happen? Is this real life right now? One was discovered again in 2009 and they were back on the endangered list once again, likely because these guys are targeted for hunting because of their musk glands, which are said to be an aphrodisiac and can go for a whopping $45,000 on the black market. And just like that, number four, these five inch freaks are also known as three lobsters and they were thought to be completely eradicated decades ago in a small island off the coast of Australia. But 24 were found in 2001, and they were sent to a zoo in Australia, which has led them to the successful breeding and repopulation of these creatures. Whoa. That's kind of, that's like a like a stick a stick insect, right? What does that what does that remind you? Of? It's like a I don't know I don't know what it is but it's so, it's just so creepy. Okay, well obviously that was the tree lobsters. You know what, it kinda looks like it has like the scales of a lobster, the tree part. Is, is like the, uh, the the tree stick thing that I was referring to. Yeah, you guys are seeing a picture right now of uh, those stick insects. It's pretty, they're pretty cool, but I don't know, I don't know what they do. I don't know much about them. From there, number three. <laughs> What the, is, is that just a dog? Like a, this, this breed of dog went extinct and now it's back and now it's howling for werewolves. It's howling for its werewolf mates. Doesn't sound like a normal dog. So maybe this is like a different creature. Well, this species of dog is actually called New Guinea singing dog and hails from Papua New Guinea. 
They were thought to be extinct for decades until a pack was discovered in 2016. So there have only been two spotted in the wild, but there are some places around the world like the United States that have rescued what is to believed to be this breed of dog that went extinct and now they're in captivity to try to breed them, to expand them. They're clearly known for singing, you know, hence their name, hence the video we just watched. All right, moving right along, and number two, So many of you guys think that Bigfoot is an urban legend. Well, I know that it's real. Okay, I never saw it, but like I've, I've seen stuff like on TV and I think it's facts. Well, this creature that is like some kind of like half man, half ape that lives a lonely life in the wilderness. Well, that video was from 2020 in Utah. It's pretty far away, so it's hard to tell, but I can tell. That's Bigfoot confirmed <laughs> for sure Bigfoot. But if that's how big that thing looks from far away, like imagine how big it is when you're up close maybe like 20 feet all I know is I wouldn't want to come across one so this video was uploaded August 1st of this year 2020 if it's not Bigfoot then what is it <sighs> let me know in the comment section below what the heck creature did we just watch and finally in at number one Okay, so that clip is obviously from a movie. If you guys didn't know, I didn't know at first. I thought it was real. But the Megalodon is said to be a real creature and we couldn't not put this on this list. This is a real and verified clip of what was thought to be a Megalodon underwater filmed in Japan. There are reports that the Megalodon was found a couple years ago in Marianas Trench, hence the movie, hence the inspiration for the movie. Well, it was found in the Mariana Trench a couple years ago, and there was all the fuss around this creature from some of the well-known sources like Shark Week and obviously Hollywood movies that hyped this creature up. Considering 95% of the ocean has not yet been discovered by humans, it could be very possible that this thing is real in 2020. And there's probably so many other creatures we have no idea about. Mm -hmm.